In my last video, I showed you a dynamic chart with rolling 6 or 12 months or user-defined end date, which could be chosen from a drop-down list. But sometimes the year-to-date period is required in the reports. The year-to-date is the period from the beginning of the year to the current date. For example, if I choose September 2020, then the year-to-date period will be from January 2020 to September 2020. And if I choose October 2021, then the year-to-date will be from January 2021 to October 2021. In this video, I will show you the first option of creating such a dynamic chart as shown here using the offset function and dynamic named ranges. I will show you the calendar year as here and also the fiscal year which is different from the calendar year. Let's start. I will first convert the data range to a table by clicking in it and pressing Ctrl and T together. Choose a simpler design. And add a line chart. For the first option, I will put the formula together using the offset function. The offset function returns a range that is a specific number of rows and columns away from a certain cell. It can either return a cell or a range of cells. As I showed you in my last video, I'm going to type a formula now that will return an array, and I will use this formula in the dynamic named ranges, which in turn will be used for the chart. Let's assume that we're looking at the calendar year. This means that the year is going to start in January. So the year to date is the period from January to the current month. To get this period, I will type offset. And the starting point will be cell A1. I need to go down the rows. To determine the number of rows, I will use the function count, column A. This function does not count text, that's why the header will not be counted. Because I need the sales in thousands, I need to go one column to the right, so one. And the number of cells that I need in that column, so the height, will be determined by the month of the current period. For example, the month of August 2021 is number 8. Minus, because I will be going upwards or back. Month of last period, which will be determined by the offset function again. Offset. Again, starting point A1, count for the number of rows, same column, because I need to be in column A, and I need the last period out of column A, and 1-1, one, one, because I just need one cell. And for the width, 1. I'm using an older version of Microsoft Excel to be fair to everyone who may be watching this video, and that's why the whole array is not being shown. So let's evaluate the formula using F9. And the array is correct. Let's copy the formula. Please note that I used absolute cell references in the formula fixed with a dollar sign. This is necessary because I'll be using this formula in the named ranges. I will need two named ranges, one for the values and one for the axis labels. So under formulas, I'll go to define name and type year to date values, and I'll paste the formula here. For the axis labels, again under define name, I will type 
year-to-date labels. Let me just paste the formula here and change the 1 to 0 because I will need to stay in column A. And now I'll paste the formula here. Under Select Data, I'm going to edit the series. I will leave the series name as it is with the cell reference, but in Series Values, I will leave the name of the sheet and the exclamation mark and add the named range for the values. So I'll type year to date values and I will edit the axis labels. Again, I will leave the name of the sheet in exclamation mark and type year to date labels. And the chart got updated. Now it shows the year to date. Let's add September 2021 to the table. And the chart gets updated to include this month. But what if I'm looking at the fiscal year and not the calendar year? A fiscal year can begin with a different month. For example, it can begin in April. So if April 2021 is the first month of the fiscal year, and to get the sales from September 2021 to April 2021, I need to go back by the number of months of September and come down by three months so that April 2021 becomes the first month of the fiscal year. Also, the months January, February, and March belong to the previous year. And I need to go back by their month number and by 12 minus 3 to get to April 2020. So I need to adjust the formula the following way. Let me copy the expression for the month number. If the month number is more than or equal to 4, so starting from April, then I need to go up or backwards by the month number and then come down by 3. So 3 minus the month number. Else, so for months January, February, and March, I need to go back by the month number and 12 minus 3 months. So minus 9 minus the month number. Let's evaluate using F9. And the array is correct. Let's copy the formula. Under Formulas, go to Name Manager and paste it for year to date values. For year to date labels, I can use the offset function. Offset, year to date values, zero for rows, and minus one for columns because I need column A. And the chart gets updated to show the year to date beginning in April 2021. But what if the user wants to choose the end date from a drop down list? Let's first prepare it. Under Data, I will go to Data Validation 
choose list. And as a source, I will choose A2 to A22. Because the data range got converted to a table, even though the references are absolute, if more rows are added to the table, the list will get extended. Let's apply the Format Painter. And the list is done. I will change the formula and type Offset. The starting point will again be cell A1. The rows will be determined using the match function, which will locate the choice of the user, which is in the cell F17. And I will subtract 1 from it because I have a header. Match F17 and column A exact match and minus 1. 1 for columns because I need to be in column B minus because I'll be going backwards and the number of cells that I will need will be determined by the minimum or lesser value of the month number of the user's choice and the position of this month in column A minus 1. And one for the width. This formula is for the calendar year. And the expression under the min function is a troubleshooting measure if the table does not begin with January but with a later month. Let's evaluate the formula with F9. And the array is correct. Let's also copy it and use it in the Name Manager. In the Name Manager, I will paste this formula for year-to-date values. And the labels will get updated automatically because I used the offset function with year to date values. And the year to date is correct. Let's add October to the table. The list got updated. I'll choose October 2021. And the year to date is correct. But what if we're looking at the fiscal year? Let's assume that the fiscal year begins in April. In that case, I'll have to change the formula the following way. I'll have to add a condition. So I'll type if. The number of the month in F17 is more than or equal to 4, so starting from April, then the number of the month in F17 minus 3. Else, the number of the month in F17 plus 9, so 12 minus 3. Let's copy the formula Go to the name manager 
and paste it under your to date values. The labels will get updated automatically because I used the offset function with year to date values. And the chart got updated. The expression under the min function is again for troubleshooting. And if I choose March 20, for example, even though I don't have a full year to date, still three months will be shown. Let's choose August 20. And now we see the month from April to August of the year 2020. Let's choose October, and now we see the month from April to October 2021. Please like and subscribe for more practical spreadsheet solutions.